Hi, I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Cod, and today I'm overthinking coconut cream pie. Welcome to a whole new series we're calling Overthinking Classics, where I overanalyze and overexplain classic and commonplace dishes. Today we're tackling the coconut cream pie because it appears on countless menus. But despite its popularity, or perhaps because of it, there are many lackluster versions out there. Hopefully today we're gonna right a few of those wrongs and overthink our way to coconut cream excellence. So let's get started. We're going to start with the pastry. And because coconut cream pie is an American creation, we're making American flaky pastry. This was not an easy decision, as I have a particular nostalgia for a certain coconut cream tart that was served in pâte sucre at Jane's in the Common restaurant in my hometown of Halifax. But in the interest of keeping things classic, we'll go with the more traditional style pastry crust. But having said that, I have come across versions that feature a graham cracker crust. So if pat in the pan crusts are more your speed, that is also a viable option. I will be making an all butter American style pastry, but before we do anything, you have to put a stick of butter plus two tablespoons in the freezer and leave it there for 20 minutes. While the butter is literally chilling, we're gonna put a cup plus a quarter cup of all-purpose flour in a large bowl. I used all-purpose flour here because you want a higher protein flour for American pastry. We want to encourage the formation of gluten to uphold the structural integrity of the finished pastry. What makes American pastry iconic is its flaky layers, and you can't have layers without structure. So save your low-protein pastry flours for pâte sucre, which are more cookie-like in texture. Okay, so to that flour, we're gonna add a tablespoon of granulated sugar and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Whisk the dry ingredients until thoroughly integrated. Retrieve the butter from the freezer and shred it on a cheese grater. Add it to the flour mixture and toss to ensure it's evenly coated. Now we're going to employ something called the rubbing method. And this method requires the use of your hands. So in the interest of not melting the butter, I would encourage you to run your hands under cold water for a bit. But even with cool hands, we're gonna be light and quick with our movements. Rubbing is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to pick through the mixture and press each bit of butter between our thumb and our index finger, rolling it away from ourselves. You're creating almost leaf-shaped bits of butter. If making pastry with your hands makes you nervous, you can do this with a pastry cutter, but I do find the rubbing method results in flakier pastry. Once the butter is rubbed and evenly dispersed, we're gonna add the liquid. Now I have been known to use ice cold vodka at this point. And don't worry, you won't taste it. It will evaporate very quickly when it's introduced to heat. But to be honest, using vodka has never yielded the revolutionary results food magazines claimed it would. Just a personal opinion but I believe it perfectly illustrates what we're trying to do here. We want to introduce liquid so the dough is workable. We need something akin to Play-Doh to roll it out and crimp it. But once all that is said and done, we want the moisture to get lost so the butter and flour can create those shatteringly crisp layers. Today, we're going to skip the vodka because I forgot to put it in the freezer. Instead, we're going with classic ice water. Now you only want to add as much liquid as it takes for the dough to come together. I'm hesitant to give you a specific measurement because it really is a get a feel for it sort of thing. But I will say, for a single pie shell, you shouldn't be adding more than a quarter cup. The dough will look like a shaggy mess that's barely held together, so don't push it past that point. This is not an evenly hydrated bread dough. Once you have your shaggy mass, turn it onto a surface and lightly knead it. Again, we wanna be quick and light with our movements, and if you have warm hands, introduce them to some very cold ice water. Once the dough comes together enough to form a ball, you're done. Stop touching it. Wrap it in plastic wrap and press it into a disc. This will help it chill faster and it will make rolling it out into a large circle a little easier. Transfer the dough to the fridge and let chill for one hour. You can chill it longer if you'd like, but it will start to dry out after 48 hours. If you want to hold onto your pastry longer than that, I would suggest slipping it into a freezer bag and, well, freezing it. Once your dough is thoroughly chilled, it's time to roll it out. Place your disc on a well-floured surface. If your pastry is chilled sufficiently, it should be quite stiff at this point. Start by pressing the dough with your rolling pin, making evenly spaced indents along the length of the dough. Rotate the dough and repeat the process, forming a crosshatch pattern. This will get the pastry comfy with the concept of expanding while flattening. 
You don't want to roll out one side of the dough while leaving the other side intact. This will create tension points which will cause tearing and cracking. It's not the end of the world, but that does mean you'll have to do quite a bit of patchwork once you get the pastry into the pie plate. So save yourself some trouble by rolling out your dough slowly while rotating it. This will ensure that no side is left behind. Moving the pastry around will also ensure that it's not sticking anywhere on the surface. So when it comes time to transfer the pastry to the pie plate, you can do so snag free. That was my soul. <laughs> the fastest hawk ever. <laughs> Sorry. Once the dough is in the pie plate, make sure you push it into all edges of the plate. We want to fill every corner of the vessel. Trim the excess, but still leave a good amount of overhang. Gather the edges to form a sort of lip around the entire edge of the plate. Place your thumb and index finger on the inside of the lip spaced an inch apart. Using the index finger on your opposite hand, press the pastry into the space you've created with your fingers. Repeat this process around the entire circumference of the pie plate. This is called crimping. Once you're happy with your pastry, transfer it to the fridge and chill for one hour more. This is a good time to start preheating your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. When the dough is chilled, prick it all over with a fork. This is called docking. It allows steam to escape so the dough doesn't puff up in the oven. Place a piece of parchment paper in the center of the dough and fill with dried beans. These will act as pie weights to help keep the shell from shrinking or warping. A hot tip, if you have extra time, try freezing your pastry shell. Frozen pastry shrinks less than chilled pastry. But in either case, make sure you use your pie weights. Pop the pastry in the oven and bake for 15 minutes. While you're waiting, separate one egg and lightly beat the yolk. Set aside. When the 15 minutes are up, take the pastry out of the oven and remove the pie weights and parchment paper. You can reuse the beans in future pie crusts. Brush the interior of the pastry with the egg yolk. This not only encourages a glossy golden appearance, it also helps form a seal between the crisp pastry and the creamy filling. Soggy bottoms be gone. Sprinkle the shell with raw sugar and pop it back in the oven and bake for 15 minutes or until golden and crisp. Take the pastry out of the oven and set it aside on a cooling rack to cool. Once the pastry is cooling, we can get started on our filling. Today, I'm making a classic pastry cream, but I'm switching up the casting a little by subbing three quarters of the usual milk for one can of full fat coconut milk. Pour the coconut milk into a small saucepan. Add half a cup of whole milk, half a cup of granulated sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Whisk to combine. Place the saucepan over medium low heat and bring to a gentle simmer. While the coconut milk mixture is heating up, add three tablespoons of cornstarch to five egg yolks. Whisk until thoroughly integrated and no lumps remain. While whisking constantly, pour two ladles worth of the hot coconut mixture into the yolks to temper the eggs. Pour the egg yolk mixture into the saucepan and cook over medium heat until thick and glossy. Be sure to stir constantly throughout the cooking process to prevent sticking. It will look lumpy at first, but just keep stirring. It will smooth out. Take the cream off of the heat and immediately add four tablespoons of unsalted butter cut into cubes. Stir until the butter melts and is fully integrated. Pour the coconut filling into the slightly cooled pastry shell and cover with plastic wrap. Make sure you push the plastic wrap right up to the surface of the filling. This will keep a skin from forming. Transfer the pie to the fridge and let chill for a minimum of three hours. Once the pie is set, it's time to start adding the finishing touches. We're gonna start with the whipping cream. Pour one and a quarter cup of heavy cream into the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with a whisk attachment. I opted to keep my cream unsweetened because I like the contrast between unsweetened whipped cream and a sweet filling. But you can add a tablespoon or two of sugar if you like. And you can even max out the coconut flavor by adding a teaspoon of coconut extract. Regardless of what you add, we're gonna crank the mixer speed up to high and whip the cream until soft peaks form. Pile the cream onto the surface of the chilled pie and decorate with a few swoops of an offset spatula. Garnish the pie with coconut chips and either serve immediately or chill until ready to serve. And there you go, the long-winded version of the classic coconut cream pie. I hope you enjoy this one. And if you do give it a go, let me know how it went in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future dishes for this series, don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you for baking with me. I'll see you all next time.